Good morning. Okay. It's 10, 12. Let's see who's up. <laughs> Pulling out the driveway. You know how I do it. All right. So I wanted to talk to the men again because <laughs> I got more to say. I can't get everything out in one or two or three lives about these modern day women. So I'm back <laughs> talking to the men. And uh, yeah, I could, I, I really, honestly, I really need to write a book for y'all. I really do. And the only thing that keeps me from doing that is y'all don't read. Y'all don't read. I mean, I know a few men that read or listen to books, but mm, y'all need a, y'all need a book. Y'all need a book. All right, I'm heading into the office. I got an appointment this morning, and I'm coming straight back, y'all. I'm on my appointment. That should be the last pause due to poor connection. My apologies. Hello. <laughs> yes, I will. I will be safe driving. Um, oh, he says I read all the time. Okay. Well, maybe that's that. Maybe that's next up. That is next up. Is the book for men? Because I've already written two books for women. And maybe y'all need a book, because I got more to say. <laughs> I got more to say about these modern-day women. It's a whole lot. And I just wanted to go on live again this morning on my way in and let you know a few more things. Here is a few more things you need to know about vetting women. Okay? Um, first up, and there's some ladies on here that might not like this, but, you know, that's just what it is. So, if you know anything about me, there is gender equality and there is feminism. Those two things, in my mind, are not the same. Okay? So, if you know, you know. That's why I say that phrase. If you know, you know. It's a lot of people on my platform that don't know about me. They don't know about the talking points. They don't know about relationship polarity. They don't know about masculine and feminine. They don't have that education, okay? They don't know about that. They don't know about the difference between gender equality and feminism. And so when I start talking about, you know, feminism being a hate group, feminism destroying us as a country, and see that the women and some of the men and some of the men they want to jump into the comments and try to defend feminism and you you don't even know me you don't even know my platform you don't know my talking points you don't understand and I get that so there's gender equality okay and that means that men and women are equal in our value right we are equal in, if we show up to a job and we are both trained in that job, y'all sorry, my windshield is a mess. Um, we show up to a job and we're both trained in that job. We have similar education and similar experience. Of course, we should be paid the same salary. Why would the salary between a man and a woman be different? If we both have the same education, same experience doing that job, the same training, yes. Am I not a human? Am I not a person? So yes, 100%. Should a woman be able to go out here and buy a plot of land and build a home? Of course. Should a woman be able to have a, a credit account? Of course. Should a woman be able to buy a car or, I mean, or, or, or have an investment account? Of course. Should a woman be able to vote? Of course. Like, everybody should be voting. If, if, whatever's going on out here in the political scene is affecting everybody, every legal adult, then yes, every legal adult should vote, okay? All right, no problem. You ain't gonna get no problem from me there. But this is what a lot of people don't understand about feminism, okay? So it has gone through many different stages and changes. And different talking points, okay? different goals, different ideals, different outcomes. See, that's what you're not paying attention to. 
And so women who claim to be feminists, you know, they're stuck on the gender equality piece. I'm not talking about that because I just explained that. Right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about groups that no longer support marriage between men and women. I'm talking about, um, you know, the, the, the oppression and repression, and maybe oppression is a strong word because there's some people on here that's going to, yeah, fe feminism is political precisely, right? The, uh, that, you know, in order to lift women up, let me put it like this, in order to lift women up, we got to push men down. I ain't on that kind of time, right? And how about let me go here? Let me just blow everybody's mind. I personally believe that men weren't sitting around in the 1900s and the 1920s and 30s and 40s. I personally believe that men weren't sitting around trying to figure out how to oppress women. Like, I think it was a sidebar of the stuff that they were doing. I think men were being men. They were out here conquering and, and competing and controlling, right? I think men were being men and women becoming oppressed it was like it was like a symptom it was like a sidebar but do i think that men the men that i know they were just sitting around in meetings trying to figure out how to hold women down how to oppress them and how to keep them from doing x y and z no i don't i think women weren't a thought in their head at all <laughs> like, i really don't i think they were like they just weren't thinking about us at all right other than in the sensual and sexual experience, other than in the motherhood experience, they just weren't thinking about us, right? They were thinking about them. And that is a very manly manhood male concept. I'm doing me, <laughs> like I'm doing me. I'm out here conquering and controlling and competing and doing me. And I'm not sitting around having no private meetings about how to oppress women. I'm just not thinking about them like that. Can I be honest? I'm just not thinking about them. But this feminist idea that men, everything that men have done has been to oppress women is just silly. It's just silly. Sorry, not sorry. It's just silly in my mind. No, they're not thinking about us like that. So this whole concept of, you know, masculinity is toxic and it's bad and wrong and men are oppressing women and holding us down and men are trying to keep us in the kitchen and they're trying to keep us barefoot and pregnant okay have you heard about that experiment where they actually took 100 people 50 men and 50 women and they put them in a situation where they had they had the decision to work outside and do outside work and toil the field and all that or they could go inside and do more domesticated work and they said hey yeah we're gonna put y'all in this situation you do whatever right you you do whatever you know appeals to you and guess what most women <laughs> opted to do the inside stuff Stuff. Most women opted to do the child rearing and the, the cleaning and the cooking and all of that, you know, and most men opted to do the hard labor, to do the work outside. And, and again, that's just a social experiment of let's see what you want to do. Let's see what, what feels right in your spirit, right? And that's what we have seen time and time again. The reason why women have this biological clock we have this desire to have children like nobody's making you do that nobody made me have children nobody said sat me there you better have three kids you better be pregnant by no but that was a part of my feminine nature it's a part of my feminine nature to nurture something to see it grow to feel the baby inside of my body to, to suckle it at my bosom that's how I'm designed by God. That's who I am. Okay? And for the ladies out there, well, I don't want to have no kids and I don't want, okay. But can I be frank? You are in a small percentage. You are in, that's what people don't want to talk about. That's a small percentage of women that don't want to do that or can't do that. I, I don't speak to that. Y'all know this. I don't speak to the small percentage. I speak to the majority. And the majority of us, 
want to be married. We want the devotion of a good, loving, healthy, masculine man. Most of us want to have children. We want to have a family because that is how we're God designed. And nothing irritates me more than the minority. And that's a thing. That's a trend right now. That's a trend in our country. You got the minority of people. 5.1% of people running stuff. Make it make sense. All right, I have a comment. The dictionary defines feminism as the advocacy of women's rights on the basis of equality of the sexes. I don't understand why it turned into a man-hating term. Precisely. But see, that's why I don't use it. <laughs> that's why I don't use it. And people on my platform know that. I do not use it to describe gender equality or sex equality. I don't have a problem. I'm, I'm sorry, I got a call. But that's never been my issue. Gender equality has never been my issue. But feminism, as we know it today, modern day feminism, oh, I got a problem with that. I got a problem with that. So, back to the advice for my fellas, okay? Because okay? I could go on and on about this small percentage of people in our country that's running everything. Like, that don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. But anyway, fellas, if this woman has any feminine uh, feminism talking points, any feminism talking points, fellas, is a no-no. Okay, <laughs> any feminist, feminism, femi feminism type, feminist talking points is a no. That's a no. That's telling you everything you need to know. Okay, um, and 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 we the same. You know, we no, 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 no. We're equal in value. Let's not get it twisted. Men and women are equal in value. We are wildly different by nature. We are uh, very different biologically, hormonally. We are different in terms of strength and body mass, all of that. We are different. And here's the thing I have said forever and I will never stop saying is so, <laughs> so what? Like, why are we tripping about that? Why are we tripping about the fact that men and women are different? Why is that a problem? And I'll go so far as to say, I feel that way even about race. Like, so I'm black, you white, you Asian, you Hispanic. You Indian, you Filipino, you, you know, so <laughs> what they got to do with anything? We're different. Like, why can't we be different? Why can't we be different and be cool? Why can't we accept the differences? Like that's what, that's what's burning me up. We're not trying to just accept the fact that we're different. That's okay. Different isn't bad. It isn't wrong, but it's different. And we have to acknowledge the differences, really, in my opinion, in order to really come together. We have to acknowledge the differences. We have to acknowledge the ways that we're different. And stop villainizing and demonizing each other. Oh, well, men are like this. Okay. And men, you know, they're not talkers. All right. Like, I've never, and I mean, and maybe that's why I get along with men great, because I've never pushed back on any of the ways of men. I'm like, all right, what's the hack? How can I work around it? You know, how can I, you know, get a little something? You know, that's it. That's it. I don't make him bad or wrong because he don't want to sit on the phone, yah yah with me for hours on end. Like, no, that's not how he's wired. And that's okay. I got girlfriends. <laughs> Last I checked. See, that's the problem. Some of y'all ain't got no girlfriends. Can I be honest? You want your man to be your man and your girlfriend. I don't want my man to be my girlfriend. I got girlfriends for that. Okay. But if she has any feminist talking points, and if she uses words like feminist, feminism, the patriarchy, oppressing women. Leave her alone. <laughs> Leave her alone. If you are demonized or villainized for things that, in my opinion, make you a masculine man, leave her alone. Leave her clean alone. 
well, why you be doing that? And why you don't be talking more? And I need lots and lots and lots of talking. Okay, but that's just, you know, that's how my brain is wired. Why you be compartmentalizing? Why you don't be? Because that's how my brain is wired, right? If you are villainized or demonized for anything that is innately masculine, like that's, that's, a, that's how you're different as a man, leave her alone. Leave her alone. There will be no peace. There will be yep, run away. There will be no peace in that house because she will continue to push the boundary. She will continue to push and push and push. Be more like me. Be like a woman. You know, no, I'm a man. Why you want sex? Because I'm a man. Because I have 30 times more testosterone in my body than you do. And y'all, I done said the word. I'm probably going to have to delete this. <laughs> I don't know why I can't stay off that word. I can't stay off that word, y'all. Why you be wanting to do it all the time? Because I'm cause I'm a man? Like, why are you mad? Why are you mad about that? He is a man. And he has way more testosterone than you, than you have. Right? Um, that is his way of expressing his love and care for you. That is that is the most intimate act that he can do with you. He Look... You have his full attention. <laughs> That's the one time. Let me tell you what I love about the love making. That's the one time where I have your full and complete attention on me. It don't get no better in my opinion. Okay. Your full and complete attention is on me. All right. Okay. But any of those talking points run away. Run away. It ain't going to end well. It's not going to end well. Um, and on that note. If you cannot have healthy dialogue, if you cannot disagree respectfully, if you cannot disagree without sh her shutting down or being disrespectful, run away. Run away. Okay? That's what little kids do. Little kids can't have a difference of opinion or think about something differently without calling someone a stupid head. Oh, you're, you know, and, 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 and you know, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give credit where credit is due to the Godfather. Okay, so he had this little acronym about how people are gonna do you when you get into a dialogue or a discussion and they disagree or they don't like what you're talking about, right? He had a little acronym. I have it in my phone. I can't remember it right now, but I know one of the things that they'll do: they'll dismiss, they'll start name calling. Um, he had a little acronym, and he was he was right. He was right. He was on point. He was on point about that, that that's deflecting, you know, that's what people are going to do because they simply don't agree. They just don't agree with what you're saying. What you're saying is not lining up with what they, their belief system, you know, but see, that's the sign of an immature woman that if she can't have a dialogue, she can't have a disagreement or a difference of opinion without making you wrong, making you bad. What's wrong with you? Why you think that way? Because I do. Because I do. I mean, last I checked, I'm entitled to, right? So, I, you know, just saying. But if you get called all kind of names, oh, the other word is misogyny. Okay, so listen out for that one, misogyny, right? Everything that don't line up with treating a woman like a little princess is misogynistic. You are misogyny, you know, it, it, misogynist. Right. You call a woman out on her stuff. You say, hey, sis, this is, you know, this is immature. This isn't right. Uh, how dare you? Or, or if you look, if you say to her, hey, you know, I don't, that outfit is, is way too revealing for a woman who's married, way too revealing for a woman in a relationship, way too revealing for a woman of God that you you was in church yesterday and now you wearing this today <laughs> you claim you know god like that what well, did you did you read the scripture about modesty you remember that one okay so i don't feel comfortable with, with you wearing that i don't feel comfortable going out <clears throat> with you with that on oh you're trying to control a woman's body you trying to tell me what to wear and what to put on my body you misogynist run away run away it's not hard i can't make it up <laughs> okay run away okay but those are the talking points that you're gonna listen for because everything ain't misogyny like there's some women out here that just lost their mind <laughs> like it's some women out here that are immoral illegal unethical 
okay? And and those are not things that are specific to men. Like everybody can get some, and that's what that's what I find is so interesting. You want equality, but when I call you on your stuff, now nah, it's misogyny. Make up your mind. Everyone can get it, okay? Man or woman, if you're wrong, last I checked, you're wrong. And y'all, let me let me go here. Let me tell you how deep I am into this, this, this immoral, unethical, and illegal thing, right? That applies to my children. That applies to my friends, to my family members. Like, I'm deep in this thing. I'm deep in this thing, okay? That's where my integrity lies. It don't matter who you are. You can get it, okay? So let's not, let's not play those games that, oh, I'm going to give anybody a pass. No, you're not going to get a pass. Last I checked, the God I know and love and serve, he was like, nah, I need a, you know, nah, I don't care what the relationship is with that person. You must be prepared to call out foolishness. And I do on the regular. I call out foolishness. But see, women for so long think that they can't get it. They can't get it. Don't bring that over here. And how dare you say that to me? And, uh, you know, are you the, and, and then again, they want to call your names. They want to call your names. If whatever it is you're talking about, don't align with what they're talking about. Mm -mm. They want to call your names, but nope, everybody can get it. The last I checked. Okay, he said, no, nah, they don't use those terms. Them words too big for them. Good morning. Yeah. But fellas, it is not hard. It is not hard. Like those talking points. And then here's the flip side, right? So if they have the feminist talking points, if they're using the words that I just described, okay, <laughs> just, just leave that alone. I don't care how fine she is. I don't care what she got. Leave her alone. Here's the second half of that, right? There ain't no talking points. There ain't nothing up here. Right? There's nothing up here. Nothing to stimulate you mentally. No good conversation. It's just, you know, y'all just there. <laughs> y'all just there. Like, leave women like that alone. Women don't, that can't think for themselves, don't have a mind, don't have thoughts or opinions about things, and cannot dialogue about them. It's a lot of women out here in the world like that. Like, there's just, there ain't nothing up here. There ain't nothing up here. I've tried talking to them, and I'm like... Oh my goodness, like, how, how are you out here trying to date? Like, you, you, I mean, okay, you know, like, I just, the intellect is not there. There is very little intellect. There is very little critical thinking, right? And this is another thing I noticed. When you try to engage them in a real conversation, something real, something genuine, Again, they're just like, oh, I just, you know, I don't want to talk about that. I prefer not to talk about that. That's a subject I don't talk about. And it's like a whole lot of subjects like that. Because, and can I be real? Because they don't have anything to add of value. That's why they're saying that. Oh, I just don't be talking about that. I'm not into politics. I'm not into this. I'm not into that. Because you don't have anything of value to add to the conversation. Or, this is a follow-up piece, we can't have a respectful dialogue about it. You're going to get into your feelings. You're going to feel a way if I disagree with you. Like it's one or the other. So you want something real, right? The whole idea right now is to find something real, something genuine, something that's about something. A woman that can actually support you in the life that you're trying to build for yourself. Like I'm going to keep it 100. She, that woman's going to have standards. She's going to have intellect. She's not an idiot. You're not going to be able to just tell her any old thing. But you know what? That's the realest chick you ever going to come across. Okay? That's that's the one right there. Yeah, he said, yep, no conversation at all. Same old dull conversation, no intellect whatsoever. Yep, yep, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it. Well, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'll be trying to talk to new women that I meet at events. And, you know, I'm just like, all right. <laughs> Uh, you know, and unless we talking about something silly, right? And I, I be, I be trying to find something silly to talk about just to have conversation because I'm meeting new people. 
And I leave that conversation like brain cells have died. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, oh God, I gotta go, I gotta go and, and read the encyclopedia when I get home to get my intellect back. You know, like I'm being funny, y'all. I'm being funny. I'm not trying to offend, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. Is there nothing in their brain? Yeah. So, mm, but leave that alone. Leave that alone. That's probably not anything you can do long term. You can have fun with it, but you really can't do nothing long term with it. Mm -mm, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Um, but if she's watching um, the Kardashians, if she thinks they're amazing, if she's dressing like them, if she's emulating them or emulating anybody on social media that, you know, again, ain't got nothing up here, ain't about anything, you know, run away from that. That's trying to tell you something. And you got to pay attention. You got to pay attention. Like I said, there are a lot of great women out here, real women, genuine women. Okay. And this is what I'm telling the women, because this is what men have been telling me about a lot of good women, but they're like, oh, but you know, their hygiene or their level of um, attractiveness, you know, they, and I think they could look better, right? I've always told women that. I meet women, I have these consults with women all the time, and I'm like, sis, okay, bare bones, you have, you have great bones, as they say when they talk about houses, but you do need, you do need a little something, you know, like I tell them. You do need a little something because that's what we're talking about. That's what we're working with out here. Men need to look at something. They need to look at something. They need to feel attracted to something. And so there are lots of great women out here that have what I call good bones. The, the, the foundation of what they are is good, but they just got to, you know, it's just a little something. It's a little something. It's the hair. It's the skin. Um, it's getting better glasses. Um, it's, it's, it's working out. It's tightening up. It's wearing certain clothing, right? It's just a little something. Just a little something will kick them to that place where, yes, the man, you're going to draw him in. Because remember, this is the formula. All of this draws the man close, right? Draw him in. That's the, everything I got is drawing the man over. He's like, hey, Anita, what you talking about? And then what we'll come out of this and this the sweetness, the demeanor, the femininity, that's what keeps him close. And he like, ooh, it feel good over here. Oh, man, we're talking about something. Ooh, she making me feel all good. She complimenting me. And she got something in her head. And we having this dialogue and discussion. And it just, wow, I, I want to stay here. See, that's how that formula works. But a lot of the good women, the in intellectual women, the women who have great qualities, who are so sweet. Oh my gosh, y'all. And so feminine, so wonderful. But see, they need to work on this part, okay? That outer part that draws the man over. Because a lot of men, they like, no, nah, I'm not drawn over there. <laughs> I'm like, I get it. I get it. And I work with women on that part. That man got to be drawn. It, it got to be... Uh, you know, flies to honey, okay? He got to be drawn over, and then when you got him in close, that's when you're going to give him everything else. But a lot of women, they don't have what it takes to draw the man over, and that's the problem. That's a big problem. So I work with women on that. I'm like, no. Prime Stewart bought a badge. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I appreciate you. Okay, I'm... Uh, <laughs> Their brain is in their hips and ass because all they know is how to twist and how to outdress every other woman. Yeah, I can't even with that. Okay. I do want a woman to look good, but I believe there's levels to the looking good, right? There is, you know, there's all kinds of levels to the looking good. I have women that are more like sporty and natural. I have women that are more earthy and like sensual, the earthy, like earth mother type. I have women that are like the intellectual business type. Like I got all kinds of women that I work with. And so whatever your thing is, that's what I tell people. Whatever your thing is, you work that thing, right? So, uh, and then you have women that in my opinion, they're just overdone. Like, they're just overdone. That Barbie, you know, plastic fake. To me, that's just overdone. Like, a man can appreciate it, but he can only have but so much fun with it, right? He can only feel but so comfortable with it. So, I tell a lot of women, I want you to scale all that back. You don't, it don't have to be all that 
to pull a man in, to attract a man. You ain't got to do all that. I be telling women, you're doing too much. Like, you ain't got to do all that. And then, of course, what do they be saying? I do this for me. I wear all this for me. I'm like, okay. Okay, so, but you want a man. You want a man. Does it matter what he like? Does that matter at all? Because, you know, I'm thinking if I want a job, right? And the, and the job people say, but this is our preference. Like, this is what you got to know how to do. This 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 what will get you the job, <laughs> okay? Like, in my mind, you know, that makes sense to me, right? You got to have the bachelor's degree. You got to have the training. You got to have it. Okay, that's what will get me the job. So I don't show up at the interview with what I want, you know, and what, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, you needed a master's degree? Okay, well, I ain't got that. But, you know, I got this. This is what I, this is what I, what feels good to me. This is what I want. That don't make sense. Like, you got to do what the job asking you to do. <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, okay. Uh, South Africa, Cape Town. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Yeah, we're visionaries. Um, okay, thank you for buying a badge. I'm trying to look at your comments before I run in here. She sure is doing it for her. She's by herself. Yeah, yeah. Prime Stewart, thank you for buying another badge. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, I, and I, I talk to women about this all the time. And I give the job analogy. Okay, you're willing. So here's what's funny. Ah, uh, let's go here. Let's go here. You're willing to do what's necessary to get the job, but you're not willing to do what's necessary to attract the man that is like, hey, I don't need all that. I don't want or need all that, but you're not willing to do that. <laughs> so I, I just, like I said, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. I don't deal with the plastic parts. I love authentic, real parts. Yeah. And, pl and, and what's so crazy is plenty of women have authentic real parts. That's what I don't understand. Like, why are you going above and beyond on the parts? You got parts. I got parts. They ain't huge parts. They ain't big parts. But I got parts. I got parts that men won't. You know, like, that's it. Work with what you got. I don't understand it. Work with what you got. I got lashes. I got hair. I don't got a whole lot of it, but I got hair. And I do the best with the hair I got. I got nails. I keep my nails short and trimmed and, and manicured, but you know, I'm a practical woman. There's a lot of stuff I do around my home, so I can't have no five inch nails, but they're clean. They're groomed, right? So I don't get it. I don't get it. And, and like I said, I think it's acculturation. I think that's where our culture is going. It's, it's driving women to these ridiculous ideals. Men don't like it, which is why I just am like, oh, well, you lost me right there. Men don't even like it. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I just don't get it. They don't care about what men want, precisely. They don't want other women to talk about them. Yeah. Well, that ain't me, baby. Talk about me. Like I said, I said, and women don't talk about me. Can I be honest? Because they know Anita don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. I don't care what no woman think about me. Okay? So, all right. But they don't. Many ladies think most guys want only curly-haired ladies, and that's a misconception. We just want to see you. Whatever you got, we want to see, and rock, see you rock that. I agree with that. Guys, keep telling women that. Please keep telling women that. Because for some reason, and this is based on what they're telling me, oh, no, men like this. Men like BBLs. Men like big boobs and big butts and blah, blah, blah. Okay, men, is, is like the guy said in his video, men like naked women. Men like women showing off their bodies. And the number one women that are showing off their bodies are the women with BBLs. Can I be honest? If Anita got on here and she showed off her body, I could easily get 10,000 likes. Right? Men like bodies. They like naked bodies. They like, you know, women's bodies are sensual and sexual. We will always be the sexier sex. We just, we just bad. We just good to look at. Okay? Men showing off their bodies. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, it, it just, it just don't do it like that. A woman's body is just sexy. It's just sensual and sexual. So, but you can have your regular body. Right? Like, you don't need all that. Well, please keep telling. Please keep telling women that. 
He says, I always ask him, am I wrong because I want my black woman to look black? You not. You not. I love what God gave me. I really do. I love what God gave me. I love being a black woman. I will never get tired of that. And and I just don't understand. Let me go. Let me go here and just, you know, vent a little bit. <laughs> so this is what I will never understand. So the black women who are wearing the blonde hair, like, please help me, y'all. Can somebody in the comments tell me why? <laughs> why is that a thing? Why is that a thing? I just don't understand it. Like, there's no part of me that would want to do that, for real. Like, I dress up. I dress up for Halloween. I put on a blonde wig. But I'm not going out. I'm not, you know, I'm not dating like that. Kimmy, no, no. It, it was for fun. <laughs> it was for fun, right? But there are women putting on these blonde wigs. I just don't get it. I don't get it. I, and, and, and the hair... The really super ultra long hair, like the, if they do their hair, the, the wig or the weave, it's like super long. Like, okay, I, I just don't understand that. I don't get it. And then what's so ironic is you had a whole, like, you had a whole season where white women wanted what black women had. I, I, <sighs> so that's what is so ridiculous. The white women want what y'all got. And you got it. Like, that's the lane I'm going to stay in. That's the lane I'm rocking. Like, y'all want what I got. You want this, this caramel skin. You want these lips. You want these hips. You want this backside, right? So that's what I just, I, I, I just can't, it can't make sense. I just don't understand it. My brain don't work that way, okay? Now nah, you get a million likes. Thank you so much, sweetheart. I like women with the wigs, the braids, the silk press, everything, okay? He said he like it all, okay? I know that's right. Like Mary J. Brodge. Yeah, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Okay, I'm from the black blonde. See, I, I just don't understand it. I don't get it. Yeah, he said they're doing it for other women, never for men. I just don't get it. If I'm going to get a black woman with blonde weed, blue contacts, and bleached skin, then why not just get a white woman who already grows blonde hair, has blue eyes, and has white skin? Precisely. I just don't understand it. I've never understood that. I've never wanted, you know, to wear contact lenses to change my eye color. I've never wanted to be blonde. Um, I just don't get it. <laughs> like, I really, I don't know. I just don't understand it. But what really keeps a man, honestly, is how you operate in his space. How does she meld with me? And you know what I personally believe? I personally believe that it's about how a man feels about himself when he's with a woman, right? So if a man feels confident and self-assured, if he feels smart, if he feels comfortable and relaxed, like if he can feel good about himself with a certain woman, that to me is what gets that man to commit. That is what gets him to go the distance, right? He connects with her on a deeper level. Um, he feels respected by her. That's a huge one. He must feel respected and admired by her. And honestly, if there are any ladies on here, that is the secret sauce that a lot of women who are not super fine, who don't have the perfect body, they would be considered by... Um, you know, regular standards as average. Oh, she's average. I don't know why he's with her. She's average. But that's the secret. That's the secret sauce. That man feels amazing when he's with that woman. That's what a lot of y'all don't understand. But you think it's all about what's on the outside. You think it's all about... No, it's something else. And I believe it's femininity. I believe it's respect. It's admiring. That's what I believe it is. So you got to do that inside stuff. Okay. Uh, I run from black blondes. I know that's right. Why not just get the woman she's trying so hard to be precisely? I just don't understand it. Our black people were the originals with the blue eyes and blonde hair, not white folks. That's right. That's right. We come in all shapes and sizes, all, all of it. That's us. That's it. All right, y'all. I am headed into my office. I thank you so much for joining me on this live. You're coming in on the end. I want you to watch the replay. Give me your thoughts and your comments. Fellas, what are some things 
that you would say are red flags? What are some things that men need to avoid when out here dating or how they're going to vet a woman? I would love to hear from you. I have my thoughts that I share with men, but what are, what are some of the things that make you go, oh no, make you run away? Things that you're saying, nope, that's a no, I can't do it. I wouldn't date that woman or I wouldn't be in a committed relationship with that woman. I wouldn't marry that woman. What are some of those things? I want you to share them in the comments of this video because maybe I missed something. Maybe I left something out. I mean, I could go on and on and on, um, but in 2022, the feminism piece the the language that they're using the b truly believing in their spirit that men and women are equal and we're the same that's a big red flag that's a big red flag that's a woman who don't even know her divine femininity so mm -mm, don't don't do it you're gonna be competing with that woman in your own home and that is not what romantic relationships are about i do not want to compete with my husband not at all I want to collaborate or or follow. Okay, that's it. Those are my those are my modes that I operate in when I'm with my man. I collaborate with him or I follow him. That's it. I'm not trying to lead and I'm not trying to compete. Okay, so have a great great. Oh, he said high body count. Oh Lord, but y'all y'all have no way of verifying it. So I, I wouldn't even put that on the list because you don't have a way to verify it. So. Lots of babies, multiple baby daddies, for sure on that one. Now, you can verify that one. Okay, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Prime Stewart, for buying two badges. I appreciate you so much for supporting the platform. But I want you all to have a great day today. As always, stay open to love.